sense of humor. Sense of yeah. We're actually a very serious band. You know, the more serious you take us, the more you'll get out of it. Mm. The more you will receive, the more serious you are. We spent some time uh, in the very northern part of Alaska, and we were doing some marine uh, research there on ice caps and so on. Um, and then the uh, way the new album, Hot Sauce Committee Part 1, started was we got an opportunity to go on this boat called the Octopus to actually go down to Antarctica and study uh, what was going on there on the boat. And the boat also had a recording studio. And so we got to record in the studio. So that kind of, that was what got the whole kind of ball going. And two submarines and a helicopter. That's true. Well, the lyrics for this album were written a long time ago because this album is actually a prequel to License to Ill. So many of these lyrics were written over a hundred years ago. We're just trying to sell records, you know, just trying to reach different audiences, you know, like we're doing a big benefit for chickens. Chickens. chickens, yeah, for chicken people that deal with chickens and stuff, and that's like a whole audience we haven't reached yet, so we're looking to sell some records. To there. chickens or to people like that are fans of chickens? No, chickens can't buy, you know. Politically, um, we're trying to sell records to different organizations like the Sun Group. There's Sun Worshippers um, that we haven't really tapped into that market. We'd like to sort of sell our product to the Sun Worshippers and to sort of um, the goth audience that uh, kind of dispels the sun. And we'd mm -hmm. like to kind of tap into that market too. And what types of things, Adam, do you see us doing to reach the, you know, the night-loving goth people? Well, it's just, you know, it's just a relationship, you know, it's just a matter of just uh, opening a dialogue, you know, and that sometimes is all you need. We went on a safari. Uh, we are, because we're all very avid butterfly collectors. While we were on the safari, you know, we had the big nets for the butterflies. You know, we catch them live. We don't hurt the butterflies. We just like to check them out. When you check these the TV don't mean to bring static. We actually ourselves then got abducted, and we got raised by a pack of uh, elks. It turned out that the uh, elks were uh, addicted to yeah. which is strange, I know. So we, we took the opportunity when they were out procuring said substance, we snuck out and came back and went straight to the studio. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm originally from, that's where my name, Yauk, is uh, from, you know. And that's where I get the whole snowboarding thing from. Mostly I inherited it from him. He pretty much invented snowboarding. He's like an old yodeler. He goes, he actually built his own helicopter out of wood. And, uh, and he plays a flugelhorn, you know, it's, a, it's actually called an alpine horn there in Switzerland. It's a long, like, 20-foot horn that you blow, and then the moose come out from behind the hills. And he's got this flugelhorn attached onto this wooden helicopter he built. And so we'll, like, fly to the top of, like, the Alps, the Swiss Alps, and then we snowboard down. I'm trying to do co-promotions now um, with MCs like Jay-Z, 50 Cent, people like that, uh, Mary J. Blige, Missy Elliott and doing um, things like three-legged races. I don't know if they have that in this country where you'll have, say, you know, two people tied. run with each other and their legs are tied together. So to try to get these kind of like family, you know, events going that anyone can compete on, you know, it's a very level playing field. And I think when you get that involved, people see the human element involved in hip-hop. It'll really change people's feelings. Potato with, sack races? Potato sack, carrying, you know, running the egg with toss. the egg in the um, spoon. What Maybe we do is we come in and we start training. And normally there's about a one year preparation process for recording an album. This time we pushed that out to a six year prep thing and then we recorded the entire album in one day. Well basically what happened was the last album, last album was a good album but um, Coach felt that we really needed to work on defense and stuff on the off season. So the past, I don't know, about three years we've been working a lot of defense and we're doing a lot of drills here. We have a lot of training facilities in the other room. And um, that's why we don't want to rush things. So we want to really hone our skills and defensively, offensively, team-minded. Mike's more of a, like an outside shooter. Mm -hmm. Adam works a lot on his uh, inside game. I help uh, tighten up the backboards when they're broken. Yeah. Make sure that the rim is properly attached. 
to me. You know, a rapper, that's fine. You might make a whole album or several albums and you're a rapper, but to, to really be at the, at the level where you're controlling things and you're master of it, that's, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people might eat cheese. That doesn't make them an offenor. Mm. No, often or no is it's really okay. This it, is, you know, is the cheese between a barista and some jackass who makes a cup of coffee? Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. that's done. All I right, see. difference between sommelier and just you know, a drunk, difference between somebody yeah. making a loaf of bread or going to the boulangerie. Mm. You know, this mm. is the difference between a rapper and an MC. I don't know, it's funny you should ask that. that. Um, we had once been elephant hunting in Africa, and we had built these, uh, these cameras out of uh, ivory tusks, and uh, we had this, this, uh, well, we have a big marketing research team that you know we send it sends out a lot of stuff to figure out you know what sh we should Put wear for that day. Out. Put a lot of feelers out, professional feelers. See what, what kids are what, what kids are into in terms of like toothpaste and stuff like that. You know, sales wise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like one day I'd be rapping bags. about like um, bur bags. burgers and hefty bags, and like by the time that song is done, and a month later, like it's Louis Vuitton. It, Louis Vuitton and and right. uh, laces you know. for shoes are really important. My brother said that kids don't play hacky sack anymore. Um, what is he talking about? Next thing you know, he'd be saying that they don't use click clacks or hula hoops. Yeah. The idea for the film was actually sold to us by a group of crusties over in England. We were the alien crusties. They were alien aliens from crusties. outer space. Yeah. In the form. Now, as far as we knew, they were just crusties, but. People had told us that they may be aliens disguised as crusties. Right. But we purchased the idea for, uh, is it $28, 28 Hong Kong dollars, I think. I don't know. If, which, well, I mean, we can't talk really talk about, about it because there's know. a lot of controversy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the real issue was who's in the front office. Yeah. <coughs> and it was basically yeah. some people that I'm not going to mention in the front office. I'm just going to say it. They were, they were about to trade Horvitz for the singer of Creed. Why so long between albums? You know, Charlie, you know, I got a lot of things to do. You know, I got a busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, you know I know. What I mean? Jerk my chain, too. It's not, it's not easy for me. You know, I got I things know. to do. I know you do. Like what? You know what I'm saying? Just like, like what? You know what I mean? I got to walk my dog. Right. There is also another thing that we're working on. I don't think it'll come to fruition because it's going to cost billions of dollars, which we don't have. But. We are in talks with scientists about, at the end of the show, climbing into a robot and then taking off from the stage in the said robot and then flying to our next... Um, Maybe there, are, there isn't enough uh, focus on Easter. Maybe there could be more rap songs about the Easter Bunny, about candy, about painting eggs. I'm actually working on two albums right now about painting eggs. I feel like maybe that'll help to fill the void. Sponsored by the Paws Company. That's a great idea. Yeah. And I know it sounds harsh, but the, the chocolate Easter Bunny is like crack cocaine to the young child. It's true. I'd like to apologize for that last thing Mike said. He didn't mean that. <laughs> well, chocolate, chocolate Easter Bunny is good. They say a band that cooks together stays together. Mm. And we, at least, you know, once or twice a week, we get together and we prepare a huge feast. Yeah. A meal. Yeah. Sometimes Same. we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have, say, Northern Italian night. Yeah. Sometimes I just, on my way to the studio, just, just jump, just grab a bunch of stuff from a garbage can on the corner. But it's really in the presentation of the food and the items that you make. So yeah. we work it out. I mean, like most recently, I think garbage one night. Garbage, garbage plate day. day. Yeah. As you can see, the band has trouble maturing. I mean, physically, no, but mentally, well. Yes.